All right, mic check one, two. You got your record with you, huh? Yeah, that song, OB, still playing the vinyl, man. No, no, that's cool, man. We have um, we have one guy who always brings by vinyl. He buys the new stuff. He loves it. He doesn't, you know, he's just so comfortable with it. His name is Tony Trofer. But one day we got to have you guys spin together, do a whole vinyl that would, set. That would be great. Have great. you ever heard Tony or yeah, heard of I him? I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, because he, all he does is vinyl. So shout out to Tony Trofer. Um, so we are here with uh, Easy Mo B and Miss Cookie, What's and going it's on? a pleasure to meet you. Thank it's you. an honor. Uh -huh. And um, how, how did you did you get comfortable after a little bit? I think it was one time up there where with the pitch. See what it is is on the twelve hundred. The technique twelve hundred. It's a vertical control. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and down means up. That. And up means down. I know that. I know because I switched them. That turntable, but, everything's know. interchangeable. So I had them turn battle style and I switched them. So but, it was a little, yeah, it was a little you, awkward for you. But you know, one thing though that I will say is that being a DJ, you must learn to adjust. It's just like being a good artist when you go on stage. Don't scream at the sound, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? The equipment, the equipment, it is what it is. If you're good, or if you're good enough, you look just Yes. And that's to the best of my ability what I would do. You're absolutely right, because that's true. A good DJ, you you know, you're you're here, you should be able to adapt and, and you honestly, you to me you were getting into it. The more time you were on it, you were, it seemed like you're having fun, you were getting into yeah, it. So yeah, yeah, next time when you come <laughs> back <laughs> next time when you come back, hanging out my mouth. If you want if you want to bring <laughs> your twelve hundreds, you're more than welcome to, but you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll worry about that in the future. But I, th I thought you did great. Your selection was awesome. And um, everybody was loving it. So, you know. Fire. You know. Right. Did everybody enjoy? Yeah. That's the that everybody in the, house. the building. Yeah, All right. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we figured we'd just uh, talk to you for a little bit, you know. And, uh, you know, and I know you've had a long history in the business. And, um, and you're still going and going. Oh, yeah. And you got a lot of things, so we're going to talk a little bit. I'd like to just let everybody know a little bit about your history, and then we can get into, you know, all the new current stuff. But I know you you were actually um, very much into the hip-hop and R&B scene. You did a lot of work with some big people. Can you uh, give us a brief synopsis on, on the people who don't know? Yeah. My first touch of even wanting to produce or do the music, I started out the projects in Brooklyn with a group called Rapping is Fundamental. Matter of fact, AB Money, a single that I produced for him, is out. This came out the other day. I think okay. it was Thursday called uh, Too Young featuring Big Bob. Go and check that out. But Salute after, AB. Yeah, but after that, my first real break was with Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. And then I produced the genius that is Jizza. Before there was a Wu-Tang. It was talking about Wu-Tang. Mm. Talk a little bit more straight into that. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm, there you go, beautiful. Thank and you. um, after that, one of the best things that could have happened happened. I produced Miles Davis, his very last album. Wow, the entire album. It was a jazz hip hop hybrid. Um, and then that won a Grammy. And back then they had this thing about the Grammy curse. I was like, oh, I'm done. Mm. <laughs> but then the next best thing that could have happened happened, and uh, it was Biggie, and Craig wow. Mack. And then it started to just keep going. Brooklyn. Busta Rhymes, Lost Boys. Uh, oh, man. Wow. LL Cool J, Public Enemy, Latifah, the list goes on. I'm, I'm, I'm real grateful, man. That's awesome. That is awesome. Real grateful. Man. What was what was your most, um, your, your in, as far as that scene, your biggest achievement, that you, the uh, one that you really, really treasure the most out of everything is Miles, it the miles davis yeah it would have to be the miles davis Le legend i mean a lot yeah. of legends you just mentioned but miles davis really mm. is a true legend and jazz is such an influence on so much types of music you know i mean hip-hop even house music uh, everything you know? you're right jazz has influence absolutely almost every genre every genre right. yeah it's amazing mm -hmm. um so what what made you um were you always into house music, or did you at some point feel you wanted to transition into that? I'm not no young boy. Well, I'm not <laughs> young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to scream my name out here like while on the interview, but just let's just say I was a student early as, oh, man, 
81, 87, like 82, 83. Tony Humphreys, 987, Listen, Kiss Master. Man. You're, you're going Bates, back to my era too, so don't feel bad. Yes. I, I have a feeling we're my very heroes, close in age. My heroes <laughs> is like Tony Humphreys, Frankie Knuckles, Bruce Forrest, mm. Larry Levan. Chef Tony Pettibone, Knuckles. Jose the Animal Diaz. That, that was all the uh, the KTU yeah. battle of the disco DJs. Can't, wow. forget, can't forget Timmy Regis. He really? had a major influence on me. He was on the BLS with Merlin Bob and, you know, so... so. Uh, and the era that I'm from, I was taught that that era taught you to like appreciate the whole spectrum of you. You yeah. know what I mean? If you love at that time, if you loved hip hop, you also loved house. Loved True. So that's the, so what you're seeing over there. That that's a product of. of the era. Absolutely. Well, back in the day, everything was was kind of dance related. Even the early days of hip hop. Exactly. All the you know uh, the chic, all, all those all those tracks that they you know they rapped on were all dance tracks. Mm -hmm. There was uh, disco, house music, even the new wave, um, freestyle. Everything in the eighties was all dance related. It was yeah. all dance music and you know different genres. So um, absolutely, I agree 100%. And everything was so unsegregated back then. We all enjoyed everything. Exactly. Now everybody's like uh, into hip hop, they're into house music. And then not only just house music, they're into deep house. They're not into the, you know, the tribal house and tech house. Everything is so segregated into different categories and everybody specializes into those zones. But back in the day, we just love music. I just love music. Man. Absolutely. All kinds of music, man. I agree. So you I'm know. I'm right there with you, man. Yeah. Um, so you always enjoyed house music. Did you, you just felt like uh, you just kind of fell into uh, with the hip hop and R and B? It just kind of happened and you just went with it, even though I, I watched hip hop uh, be born. You know what I mean? I mean, it was already going on and started uptown and like. Bronx, but mm -hmm. we had the same thing going on out in Brooklyn. I remember, you know, hip hop starting in the form of <laughs> DJs out in the back park in my projects, Lafayette Gardens, with two copies of Dreaming a Dream, a Crown Heights affair, just yeah. running that break over and over. See, what people don't understand is hip hop was born out of the frustration of disco. Mm -hmm. So if you're from that era, you can't deny having an experience with disco because hip hop was born out of the frustration Absolutely. of disco. Meaning, meaning, I don't want, I don't want all my just that small break. Part. Absolutely, the break. Yeah. Just keep that going mm -hmm. over and over. And today we have samplers and machines that will. Yeah, but but the DJs were doing that manually yes, by yes, hand. Yeah. So that's my first teacher out in the park. Yeah, Absolutely. DJ. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you pretty much focused on house music now, or do you still dabble into other things? Or oh, man, this is—I'm telling you, I love all of. It. Yeah. To do this, I'll do it on Instagram. Today, I posted like a just just a raw hip hop beat. <laughs> it's just I love music. Yeah. All of it. I hear. And balance it out. How do you feel about the, the hip hop that's coming out today, the trap and that stuff? I'm I'm not really a, a, a huge fan of um, no. anything that's like repeating. Too much repetition. I think, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like repetition. I think, you know, there's some good stuff out there, but I think it needs to be taken to the next level. Absolutely. We need something new right now. And I don't, you know, I don't know where it's going to come from. I, I know there's a lot of New York guys who are working on that, but it doesn't seem that it's getting the attention and it's not really making any changes because we keep saying that, you know, we're going to, it's all going to come from New York. We're going to bring it back. And yet year after year after year, it just seems like it's other states. And, and the trap music, like you said, repetitive. It's like, even though it's it's different music it's they're all using the same instruments the 808 and the and the tones and everything so even though the tracks are different a little bit musically drum wise they sound the same you know so even vocally i mean yeah, vocally, honestly you know it, it, it's a major issue with creative criticism they do not and i get a lot of lip for that but it's always been real talk <laughs> okay so at the end of the day you know a lot of the vocals a lot of the flows they're not versatile anymore. Everything sounds like you just said. Then nobody's the saying anything anymore. I mean, you go back, no and, you know, like Nas and, and um, Rakim and, and 
you know, there was so much lyrically, there was so much messages and, and the, the way they used to, I mean, to me, Nas always, it was like educational, you know, I mean, the guy was like going in the Bible and taking you know, stuff out of the Bible and, and, and teaching, using new words that, you know, a lot of these kids never heard of. And, and now I don't hear any messages. I don't, I don't hear any education. I, I don't know. There's a few guys out there, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a shame. I, uh, maybe you can have an impact on it in the future, you know, so. I am not done. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I don't doubt I got, you. I got um, so much more to do. I got something that I just want to talk about right here. That's right what now. I was going to that, say. That's Tell us. development. But I'm going to be quiet about it. Tell us. I'm not. I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> Tell y'all, us. Y'all will see. <laughs> Tell us. A, see. Give us a little bit of idea of what you're like working Mo on B? now. Yes. Give us a little bit. What are you What are you working on? What What are some of your? Um, you don't have to get into details, but um, some of the projects that you work. On. I know that uh, we had one of your your uh, boys here, um, E Man. Oh, E Man. Yes. He was here. Shout out some of the. And he's a very Brooklyn. talented producer too. He he did a lot oh, of yeah. great dance music. Me, E Man, and DJ MC on Friday night gonna be at Output okay. doing this and more. Awesome. Um, everybody, you know, come out, enjoy yourself. If you enjoy, you're a fan of classic disco, dance, and house, you know, like what I was just doing up there, plus mm-hmm. plus more, you know, awesome. times three. Easy Moby, <laughs> E-Man, and DJ Emski at yeah. Output Brooklyn. Well, I know all about it. You got a great promoter by your side, so she's uh-huh. always getting the word out there. Cookie so. is the hostess with the most. The hostess with Ow. the most. I think I've called you that. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in there. You already know. Make sure you guys check that out. Definitely Friday. This Friday, 74. 74 White in Brooklyn. 74 White in Brooklyn. Club wife. Output. We don't want them to go to White. Wife. 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 <laughs> we always get that. W Y T H E. Okay. Got it. So, Good. is there anything that you'd uh, like to talk about before we uh, let you go? Well, um, I did some stuff for Sadat X new album. I don't know when Buster Rhymes is gonna drop his new album. I did some stuff towards that. Um, A B Money from Rapping is Fundamental that I spoke about earlier that has a single out right now called Too Young. Um, he's completing the rest of his album. We can expect that pretty soon too. Um. Faith Evans, she has a, a album called The King and I. Okay. Yeah, where she's uh, mixing together like uh, Biggie's verses together with um, her, hit, her R&B. Okay. Well, that's that should be pretty interesting, right there. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of things, man. A lot of things. People um, continue to call me. I will continue to work. That's awesome. I'm, man. I'm here. I love the music, man. I'm on board. Absolutely, that sounds great. Yeah. So, um, let everybody know where they can follow you regarding social media. You have any sites or anything so they can keep up to date? So, as you release these, you know, people can get a hold of yeah. them. Yeah, and Cookie, before I do that, give give them the uh, the Facebook group. What's the name of the Facebook group? Oh, absolutely. Um, the E Men. Yeah. Yeah, definitely check out the E Men. You got to go on to. I mean, there's a few of them, but we have. Um, E E E M three. Okay, get it. E M three. That's E Z Moby, DJ M Ski, and E Man. So definitely check us out. The page is on Facebook. E M three. Okay, um, club. Yeah, and for me, my contacts. I'm on Instagram at at the real E Z Moby at T A G real E A S Y. M O B E on Twitter is E A S Y underscore M O underscore B E on Facebook. You can find me if you know my real government name. Uh. <laughs> if you don't do your research, you it's the government man. You know, Facebook's been doing that to why. us for why the past year. Change my name you know, to I'll tell you why because the FBI wants to be able to get in touch with individuals if they need to certain and, and individuals no no they like some want they, you're right <laughs> but they want everybody just in case they need just in case you become that nah, they made individual. me change my ma- my name and then there's other people on that word is born no yeah. lie come on you how, go, how many people somebody on their name west bubble suck 
<laughs> but you made me change my name. Uh, Yo, no, the day funny. the day I get a Facebook message <laughs> from the FBI, I'm out. I'm no. like, uh, I, yeah. I'm like, did I get handpicked or something? Like, <laughs> no, it's not just you. It's weird though, so because some people didn't, but they went after a lot of people. And it's funny because one day you go on Facebook and you're like, who Where the hell is this are these person? people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know this guy. You know guy. where it comes from? I heard that it came from because there was a, a, a problem that they had with. Um, it was a seriously man. It was a drag queen on, oh. on yeah, Facebook. That's where it stems from. Uh -huh. And there was a problem. There's a there was a problem with exactly. Well, he's right. And what, they there was a problem with oh. identity, and it, and it stemmed from there. And then that's when it happened. Yeah. But they do it. But I think now they just do it selectively. Yeah, I, th I think they're working on everybody. But the fact of the matter is they if they want to get information on somebody, they want to get their government name and they want the access. So it's it's the, it's kind of random right now, but I think eventually it's just a matter of time. Well, I'm not the type that. of person that could hide. <laughs> <laughs> you know Me what neither. I mean? I mean, you know. I'm easy to find. I don't, yeah, do you know? <laughs> I don't do anything wrong anymore, at least. So. Right? <laughs> like, dum, dum, dum. Can you imagine when I saw Joanna Cruz up there? I said, <gasps> It's okay though, cause I have no reason to hide. Man. Exactly. Oh, man. That's yeah. it. Me too. I got the right page now, so we're gonna go back real briefly. Mm -hmm. Presenting EM to the third power. Okay, so definitely check that out. Presenting EM to the third power, which is EM three. All right, Club Output seventy four, Wife Ave, which is W Y T H E, Brooklyn, New York. All right, check out the the flyer on the page. They'll be spinning classic dance. Disco and house. And in case you didn't know, this man right here is a legend. He's a <laughs> Grammy Award winning we producer. Know. He's lying. Alicia Keys. That's right. So you already know. I mean, that's just another one I had to throw out there. Someday I'm going to take his Grammy. <laughs> well, listen, it, it's going to have some fun, man. It's Definitely. A, it's a pleasure to meet you. And man. thank you for coming down and blessing us with the yeah. set. DJ G in the house. And uh, we would love to have next. you come back one time, too. Sure, you know? sure. 